This work is made possible through the support of Cornell University, Cimarron Research, and the National Institute of Health. Altered fatty acid oxidation in lymphocyte populations of individuals with myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, or ME-CFS. ME-CFS is a mysterious, debilitating illness that affects tens of millions of people worldwide. With no treatment options or cure, this disease is characterized by new fatigue and unrefreshing sleep, cognitive dysfunction like brain fog or complex information processing impairments, orthostatic intolerance, and the hallmark symptom, post-exertional malaise, wherein any physical or mental exertion will cause a rise in symptoms that can last days or even weeks without relief. While the cause of this disease remains unknown, there is evidence of a potential infectious component that, along with patient symptoms and common onsets of the disease, suggests immune system dysfunction and metabolic irregularities in people with ME-CFS. Isolated immune cells, like natural killer cells, CD4-positive helper T-cells, and CD8-positive killer T-cells, work to identify, signal, and destroy infected cells in the body. And the fuels they use, or metabolize, are tightly regulated so that the cells can properly function and fight off an immune challenge. In particular, we are interested in the use of fatty acids by these cells, since over- or underuse of fatty acids by particular cell types can tell us about the functional or dysfunctional state of these cells, and perhaps inform treatment options. We started by isolating the three cell types from whole blood, first by centrifugation, and then by using magnetic beads specific to the populations we were interested in. We then used an extracellular flux analyzer that measures things like proton efflux and oxygen consumption rates of live cells. By injecting drugs during this experiment that can enhance or inhibit certain metabolic pathways, like fatty acid oxidation, we can use these results to measure the fatty acid contribution to energy production in these cell types. We also performed flow cytometric analyses, which uses fluidics, fluorescence, and lasers to measure the frequency and abundance of different cell markers or receptors in a sample, to detect levels of a supplied fatty acid and two pertinent fatty acid transporters in these isolated cell populations. The sensitivity of a flow cytometry panel also allowed us to include markers to identify more specific T cell subsets within our samples, such as naive, effector, and memory cells to see which of these subpopulations are contributing to any altered metabolic states we see. And what we discovered was that ME-CFS fatty acid oxidation was higher in all three cell types compared to healthy controls by various degrees and driven by specific subsets in T cells. Now, it's a known fact that ME-CFS NK cells are less cytotoxic than their healthy counterparts and our data suggests that this dysfunction could be in part due to greater levels of lipid accumulation and subsequent fatty acid oxidation. We also propose that the combined metabolic profile of ME-CFS T cells that we now have suggests an exhausted T cell state, resulting in reduced effector functions that may contribute to ME-CFS symptom presentation.